Hi there. In previous videos, we've built up the books controller. And the purpose of this video series is to build APIs with Rails. Now, so far, this doesn't look much like an API. And let me show you what I mean. If we have a look at Stripe's API, for example, so let's say Stripe API. And let's have a look at the any endpoint. Let's have a look at the authentication endpoint, for example. You can see that, first of all, it's clearly delineated. They actually have a separate domain for API requests. And then you'll also notice that their API is versioned. So this one is V1. In our API, if you remember, we make we make a request like this. So we use the same domain as the rest of the application. And you know, there's no version, there's nothing to separate this route from other other endpoints uh, or other routes in the system. Now, so there's there's two reasons why um, why this is important. So the first one, it's important to separate API routes from regular routes in your application, um, just from an organizational standpoint. Um, di different rules apply to API endpoints. And so you really want to keep them separate in your, in your application. So for example, with a normal application controller and endpoint, you could change them whenever you want. But with a public API endpoint, those controllers and routes can't just be changed because you'd be breaking uh, external applications, which you don't own and can't, can't fix. The other important, the other important thing is versioning. So, as I just said, you can't, you, you want to avoid making breaking changes. Uh, but when you do have to make a change, the version, the versioning system helps you do that. So, imagine that we have version one of our API, and we want to make a major change to our API. So, for example, perhaps we want to remove the ability to destroy books. What we would have to do is create a v2 of our api and then remove the destroy action and then we could mark that destroy endpoint as deprecated in the v1 api docs and then try and get everyone moved over to v2 so let's go ahead now and add a custom namespace for this controller so that it's separate in our application it has its own uh, sort of API location and let's also version the API so first of all let's jump over to the roots and we can say I believe it's namespace and We'll say namespace API, wrap this in a block, and I'll also have another namespace for V1. Cool, let's test that out. That's, uh, so that's just an alias for running rake roots. Ah, there we go, so now our uh, roots are nicely um, namespaced, so they're separated from other roots in the application, and they have a version. Uh, but this this won't work now because the um, the root doesn't match the controller path. So what we need to do now is create a new folder, so API and oops new folder 
V1. I'm going to move the books controller into there. So now the books controller is API controller, sorry, app controller API V1. And the very last thing we need to do is um, add the correct module structure. So the, the whole um, class name of the controller needs to match the file path. So this one should be module API and then module uh, V1. And then let's add some ends. So, and then let's line this up correctly. There we go. So if I've done that correctly, we should be able to curl now, instead of books, it would be API v1. Uh, oh, I need to run the server. Bitmaps s. Try that again. There we go. So that's everything for today. Um, so we covered versioning and namespacing our API. So it's, it's if you've been following along and building this API with me, it's starting to look more like a proper API now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.